Hi, boys and girls. This is a first for us this year. This is the first time we're going to read a story that's called a biography. A biography is a story of a person's life written by another person. So the story you guys hear today and that we're going to read this week is about African-American inventors that were real people who really lived, and then somebody wrote a story about them. And those kinds of stories are called biographies. So this is written by Jim Haskins, illustrated by Eric Velasquez. And we're going to talk about comparing and contrasting also this week. And so we're going to think about how are these African-American inventors the same and how are they different? How are they alike means the same and how are they different? That's what we're talking about this week. So here's your story. Inventors create new things. Their inventions solve problems or make life better in some way. Throughout our history, African Americans have invented many important things. John Lee Love received a patent for a pencil sharpener in 1887. So here's a word you might not have heard before. It's called patent. And that means when you create something that no one's ever thought of before, you can get a special certification for it called a patent, and then nobody else is allowed to claim that they were the inventor of that thing. So John Lee Love was the first one to um, invent a pencil sharpener. So nobody else can say they were the first because John Lee Love has a patent. Garrett Morgan received a patent for an early type of traffic signal on November 20th, 1923. So Garrett Morgan was the first guy to think up a, a traffic light. John Purdy and James Sagewar patented a folding chair in 1889. They were the first per people to think of that. Okay, here's our first um, African-American inventor. His name is Benjamin Banneker. Do you have a prediction for what he invented? Let's read to find out. Benjamin Banneker was born on a farm in Maryland in 1731. That's a really long time ago. At that time, Maryland was one of the 13 British colonies in North America. So way back then in 1731, we didn't call us the United States yet. We had places called colonies. We didn't even have states back then. It was colonies. Most African-American people in the colonies were enslaved. But Benjamin's parents were free. Because Benjamin was born to a free family, he could go to school. And you know what, boys and girls, later on in the year, we'll talk about something that was pretty terrible that we used to have in America called slavery. And we'll talk about that later. Um, and here's a picture, and here's a caption that says, Benjamin Banneker grew up near Baltimore, Maryland in the mid-1700s. And that's what it looked like back then. Benjamin went to a local school for boys. He was so good at math that he soon knew more than his teacher. Oh, my gosh. After he finished his education, Benjamin worked on the family farm. Benjamin's life changed when he was 20 years old. He met a man who owned a pocket watch. Like that. The watch had been made in Europe. Benjamin was so interested in the watch that the man let him keep it. Benjamin studied the watch, its parts, and the way it was made. He decided to make his own clock out of wood. It was the first clock ever made in North America. Benjamin Banneker's wooden clock worked perfectly for more than 40 years. So here's a little caption that goes along with the picture. Oftentimes, in a um, nonfiction story, you'll see captions. And there was one over here I missed. In the 1700s, many schoolhouses were one room. So kids of all different grade levels went to school in one room, and that's what their desks look like. Benjamin used his clock to measure the movements of the stars. He used math to figure out the position of the stars. Um, to figure out the position of the stars, the sun, the moon, and the planets. Years later, he wrote an almanac. 
An almanac is a book that lists the position of the sun, moon, and planets for every day of the year. And this is what he published. Benjamin published almanacs from 1792 to 1797. You can do the math on that. From 92 to 97, how many years is that? Benjamin wrote a new almanac every year for six years. People read it to find out when the sun and moon would rise and set. They read it to find out how the weather would change each season. Many farmers used Benjamin's almanacs so they would know when to plant their crops. He was as famous for his almanacs as he was for his clock. And here's another caption. Farming in the 1700s was done by hand. Tractors and other farm machines had not been invented yet. Interesting. Okay, here's another African-American inventor. Her name is Sarah E. Good. We know quite a bit about Benjamin Banneker. We know very little about Sarah E. Good. What we do know is that she was the first African-American woman to receive a patent for an invention. A patent is a legal paper. It, gives, it is given out by the United States government in Washington, D.C. A person who invents something can get a patent to prove that he or she was the first to have made it. No one else can say they invented the same thing. And here's Sarah Good. Um, she received her patent in 1885. This is kind of what a patent might look like. Sarah was born in a southern state in 1850. She was born into slavery. When slavery ended, Sarah was a teenager. She was able to go to school once she was free. After she received her education, Sarah moved to Chicago, Illinois. Sarah must have been smart and hardworking. By the time she was 35 years old, she owned her own business. Sarah Good was the owner of a furniture store. And here's another caption. Sarah Good owned a furniture store in the 1880s. And here's another caption. In the 1880s and 1890s, many people moved to Chicago to find jobs. And that's a picture of what Chicago looked like back then. Have you been wondering, what is it that she invented? I think we're going to find out. Many African-American people were moving from southern states to northern states in the 1870s and 1880s. They moved into apartment houses. Sometimes many people slept in one room. This was because many people did not have enough money to rent their own rooms. Sarah had the idea of making a bed that could fit in a small space. It could fold up during the day and unfold at night. She worked out a design. Then she made a model. So some Chicago apartments in the 1880s looked like this, kind of small. Sarah's patent showed the cabinet bed design. Folded up, it looked like a desk. It opened up into a bed. Now that is pretty cool. This is a different kind of folding bed. Different folding bed designs have been made over the years. So here's what you might see now. Sarah called her invention a cabinet bed. When it was folded up, it could be used as a desk. There was even a place for keeping pens and paper. Sarah did not want any, well, anyone else to copy her invention. She made sure of that by getting a patent. We do not know how many cabinet beds Sarah made. We do know that her idea is still helpful for people. Folding beds are still in use today. And right here it says compare and contrast. So think about this. How are Benjamin Banneker's and Sarah Good's inventions? Compare them. Were they both helpful? How were they alike? How were they different? How did they help people? Okay, here's the next African-American inventor. His name was George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was born in Missouri in 1861. Like Sarah E. Good, he was born into slavery. His family was enslaved by a couple named Carver. George was raised by Mr. and Mrs. Carver. George loved the Carver farm with all of its plants and animals. He planted his own garden. Soon he knew so much about plants that people called him the plant doctor. And this is a typical painting of a 
excuse me, this is a painting of a typical farm in the 1870s. So that might be what his farm looked like where he lived. And there's another caption, George Washington Carver at school. And then this is the real George Washington Carver when he graduated from college in 1894. George wanted to go to school to learn more about plants. Slavery was over, so he was free to leave the Carver farm. It took him 20 years to get enough education to save money, save enough money to enter college. George went to college in Iowa. He was the first African-American student at the school. He studied farming and learned even more about plants. When he graduated, he became a teacher. George taught at Tus Tuskegee, Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. It was a college for African-American people. He studied plants at the college. George told farmers that peanuts and sweet potatoes were good crops to grow. He found that he could make 118 different products from the sweet potato. These included soap, coffee, and glue. So this is a sweet potato right here. And he figured out how to make 118 different things from a sweet potato. George taught at his college in Alabama. There he is. George told farmers which vegetables were useful crops to grow. That's another caption. George learned that he could do even more with peanuts. He made over 300 different products from peanuts. Some of these were peanut butter, ice cream, paper, ink, shaving cream, and shampoo. Did you know you could get shaving cream and shampoo from peanuts? Oh my gosh. George only received three patents for the products he invented. He believed that most of them should belong to everyone. George spent many hours working in his laboratory. And this one is Patricia Bath, MD. That means she's a medical doctor. When you go to school and become a doctor, you get called, you have an MD. That's how they refer to you. Patricia Bath was born more than 75 years after George Washington Carver. Patricia was born in a northern state. She grew up in the New York City neighborhood of Harlem. Like George Washington Carver, she was still young when she began to study living things. Her special interest was human diseases. After high school, she got a job helping people who studied cancer. And Patricia Bath grew up in Harlem, New York in the 1940s. So this is what New York looked like back then. In college, Patricia studied chemistry. Then she went to medical school. She decided to study eye diseases. She wanted to find out how to remove cataracts. Cataracts are like clouds on the lens of the eye. They make everything look cloudy. Patricia designed an instrument for removing cataracts. It gives off a powerful beam of light that breaks up the cataract. Then it can be removed. And then this is Dr. Bath performing eye surgery on someone. Ugh. You better be careful. In 1988, Patricia received a patent for the instrument she invented. She was the first African-American woman to get a patent for a medical invention. Since then, she has invented other eye instruments. Her work has allowed many people to see again. So compare and contrast Patricia Bath and George Washington Carver. What do they have in common? How are their lives different? This is Dr. Patricia Bath herself, and she's invented many eye instruments. Inventors change the world. The stories of these four inventors show how African-American inventors have helped make life better for all Americans throughout history. Benjamin Banneker helped people keep time and know the positions of the stars and planets. Sarah Good made furniture for people to use in small homes. Sorry about that. George Washington Carver made hundreds of products from sweet potatoes and plants. Dr. Patricia Bath invented a cure
for one kind of blindness. The world is better because of their work. I hope you enjoyed that biography of four different inventors. That was pretty cool.